Great to see everyone. Great to hear everyone. I like hearing everybody catching up and greeting and meeting and all of those things. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. If you're a guest here, I want to say welcome. Welcome to our fine congregation. My name is David. I'm the Director of Music and Worship and on behalf of Dr. Phil and Miss Reverend Tanya Kenner behind me in a minute, I want to say welcome. Uh, this is a great place to be on a great weekend. And obviously we come to church maybe with a little bit of heavy hearts. The news was not very friendly this morning. And we want to remember that uh, we grieve today, unfortunately, again, for violence that's happening and for weather that is occurring on the coast. And we come with heavy hearts. Maybe we read in the paper that someone we know has passed or we have other sicknesses and illnesses. And this is sanctuary. This is the place where we come to heal and to meet God. God's called us here today. He said, blessed are the peacekeepers, right? And we hope today that we can find peace through the word, through coming back home, and through worship. So welcome to worship, and let's prepare our hearts for it.
Please stand with me as we read responsively and be ready for our opening hymn, 73. God has led us through our wilderness. God has led us into a plentiful land. God has the mountain of living water. Come to the water. Come to God. We come. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that they would walk in my ways. God is our strength. God is our helper. Enter the sanctuary. Come and listen. We come. again. We're grateful to hear your call, for on many mornings we hear other voices, voices urging us to care only about ourselves, voices urging us to serve other gods, our work, our bank accounts, our egos, our peer groups, and our ideologies. By the end of the week, we feel trapped in our anxiety, our work, our spending, our need for control, and our excuses. And then we hear your voice again, calling us to your healing care, to your spacious freedom, to your giving humility. We come to rest and to be fed. Call us to your freeing love again. Feed us now, God of our strength. Amen. Be seated. Well, we certainly do welcome you again to First United Methodist Church. Our ushers are coming forward now, and they are passing out the attendance pads. We ask you to take a moment.
to fill that information out, pass it to the person next to you in your row, and then when it gets to the end, pass it all the way back down. And make sure that you know everyone on your row before you leave today. And while you're doing that, let me invite you to get out your bulletin, a couple things that we want to lift up there. <clears throat> We want to remind you that uh, uh, this next week, we, we really uh, are kind of slacked in our work, and then the, it, uh, we get started big time next Sunday. If you'll open up your bulletin for a moment and look inside, uh, in the si inside group, you think you'll see a, 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 a title or a heading there called Connect Groups. And uh, this is a description of some of the programs that we'll be offering beginning next Sunday night as we gather 5 o'clock for our light uh, supper, and then uh, 5.30 to 6.30 for uh, a wide range of classes. Uh, next week, as you can see, uh, Richard Smith will be leading a class on uh, Wesley. I'll be talking about United Methodist 101 and giving you an opportunity to ask the pastor anything. And uh, I've already received a couple interesting questions, so I'm uh, looking forward to that. Um, we're also going to be offering a cricket class. Now, a lot of you say, well, you fish with crickets. Well, not these. Uh, crickets, a cricket is a machine that uh, makes a beautiful craft. And anyway, uh, I've already told you more about it than I know. So come <laughs> and find out uh, all you want to about it. It'll be a great time as uh, we get together and, and just have some fellowship and grow in our faith and our encouragement and our, and our community together. Lots of good stuff there. This is Come Home Month. And uh, once you look around, see who's not here. What, this week, everybody has a task, and that task is to call two people that you don't see here today and just call them and check on them, invite them back, and uh, all month long, we're going to be uh, coming home, ending this month with a giant homecoming uh, worship time on the 29th of September and a good old-fashioned uh, church-wide potluck dinner. It's going to be a great day, and we're looking forward to that, but we, we need to help, you need to help make that happen. And part of that is uh, if you'll call two people, look around. It's all right. You can move your heads right now. Look around. Say, oh, I need to call. Yeah, okay. So call two people that aren't here and invite them, and let's get them all back here next week. We are also preparing next Sunday. We'll begin a time of uh, preparation for nominations. We're back into the fall season again, and that's always part of it. We've been talking a little bit about some of the committees. I've been trying to give you just a quick description. I want to continue today and talking a little bit about the Staff Parish Relations Committee, or SPR. Uh, the Staff Parish Relations is basically the human resources or group of our church. Uh, they hire and fire, and they're, well, they work with the paid staff. The, they are your liaisons uh, from the staff to the church and from the church to the staff. And... Um, if you serve or have served on SPR, would you raise your hand? A lot of you have, okay. And uh, basically this group deals with uh, evaluating, they deal with personnel policy, all kinds of things. So if you have some interest in that, that may be some place that you would like to put down you'd be willing to serve. Another group that I want to mention today is our Wesley Center Day School Committee. And uh, this group works with our director of our Wesley Center Day School and their staff. And uh, they work on, uh, as you can imagine, policy and renewal of policies or reviewing that. They do oversight and uh, try to offer encouragement and support uh, to that team. You have a day school, friends, uh, that can enroll over 100 uh, young children and uh, from, from infant or six weeks, I guess I should say, to uh, four years old. And so that's a big group of kids that we have here every single day. And it takes a lot of staff and a lot of work to make that happen. And so if you might be interested in serving on that team, uh, feel free to certainly check that as well. Uh, very important. Take your bulletin home with you. Lots of things happening here at First Methodist Church. And get ready for our big kickoff next <clears throat> week as we get ready for a big month and a big fall. Now, friends, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mighty and holy God, and we gather in this place today, and we are honored to be able to share in this Labor Day weekend, to share the joy of proclaiming you as our Savior and our Lord. 
you, holy God, of the creator of us all. And what an honor it is to be able to be with sisters and brothers, to offer our encouragement to each other, and to acknowledge that you are our God. As David said earlier, we come with concerned and even heavy hearts as we pray for our sisters and brothers in those lands that will be uh, affected by Hurricane Dorian. We pray for your protection. We pray for their safety. We pray, Holy God, that you would comfort so many that uh, are, are struggling with the results of the violence of yesterday in Odessa, Texas. And we pray that you would comfort them and give them strength to keep going. And Lord, we do pray that the violence that we see, it feels like so often, would come to an end and we would live in peace together. We know that is a big prayer. But we know also that you are a God great enough to bring change. And so help us as we seek that. We pray today for the sick and the hurting, Lord. And as always, we thank you for your blessing of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for those who have, you have gifted in the art of healing. And we thank you that we can be witnesses to that and give you all glory and honor. We pray, Holy God, for your comfort as you console so many who grieve today. Thank you, Lord, for that spirit that you put in us that fills that void left by those whom we've loved. And Lord, today as we worship here, we rededicate ourselves to be your church, to be the church in this place, the body of Christ. Lord, let us recognize the role or responsibility that every one of us has in this place. And so we give you thanks. Bless now, Lord, this worship time. And as always, bless and protect those who protect us. We pray this now in the name of Christ as we unite our hearts and voices and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to hear now the scripture for our communion meditation today from Luke chapter 11, beginning at verse 37. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. And so he went in and he took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that Jesus did not first wash before the meal. And the Lord said to him, Well, now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools! Did, you not, do, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give for alms those things that are within, and see, everything will be clean for you. Oh, but woe to you Pharisees! For you tithe mint and rue and herbs of all kinds and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! For you love to have the seat of, armor in the syn or, or, seat of honor in the synagogues and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you! For you are like unmarked graves. And people walk over them without realizing it. That's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There is an old spiritual song that includes the words, Plenty good room in my Father's kingdom. Just choose your seat and sit down. It's a song that came out of a time 
when slaves were denied a place in society. They longed for a time when they could come home and have a place at the table. You heard the scripture. One time Jesus was uh, speaking on the theme of sincerity. And a heckler interrupted him. The rude heckler was a Pharisee who later that evening hosted Jesus for dinner. And soon after Jesus arrived at the Pharisee's home, uh, the conversation became heated. In fact, the scripture does not even mention whether they ever ate or not. It may be that when Jesus got finished with them, they kind of lost their appetite. I don't know. Anyway, they had gathered at the table, and the Pharisee challenged Jesus as to why he did not wash before the meal. Now, it really was not Jesus' social graces or his hygiene that actually concerned the Pharisee. It was Jesus' apparent disregard for the purification laws of Israel. The law required that the people wash seven times before they ate their meal. Well, the verbal attack of the Pharisee was not the smartest move in the world because Jesus responded with one of the most scorching rebukes that we have recorded in the scriptures. He started out by saying, you Pharisees are fond of cleaning the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you yourselves are full of greed and wickedness. Have you no sense? Don't you realize that the one who made the outside made the inside as well? You see, the Pharisees, friends, were all about looks and right appearances. But they were corrupt, many of them, deep down in their heart of hearts. Well, Jesus wasn't finished. He went on. He said, if you would only make the inside clean by giving the contents to those in need, the outside becomes clean as a matter of course. Oh, but alas for you, Pharisees. For you pay out your tithe and mint and rue and every little herb, and you lose sight of the justice and the love of God. So Jesus leaves that house, and it shouldn't surprise us that the Pharisees began to nurture a hatred toward Jesus. He left them with a a bad case of contempt and probably some indigestion. (laughs) But Jesus' words were, listen to again, If you would only make the inside clean by giving the contents to those in need. And friends, I want to tell you, that is a call for justice for these Pharisees, okay? He's saying to them, look guys, you cannot divorce faith from life. You cannot divorce religious observance from acts of love and justice. And to the Christian disciples, you can't divorce the gospel from the world. And my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, it is no different for you and me today. We all need to remember that the Pharisees were Jewish lay people who loved their religion. And they had some pretty high standards. They believed that religion should relate to the whole of life. But not just, and not just the temple sacrifices or the Sabbath observances. And we can appreciate that, can't we? But they also wanted the law of God to apply to the whole range of human life. And keeping the law became their passion and also their downfall. Now, you know some Pharisees. Uh, The Apostle Paul, you've heard of him, right? He was a Pharisee. In fact, several of Jesus' disciples were Pharisees in seminary. We used to call them the Bethsaida Five. (laughs) There was Peter and Andrew and James and John and Philip. They were all Pharisees. They came, they they were from Bethsaida. That was the conservative center of the Pharisees. Anyway, the Pharisees developed an elaborate scheme around which each law to ensure that there were enough exceptions built in to the law that they would not transgress. And when religion, friends, listen, when religion gets this strung out on details and technicalities, then maybe we've forgotten what true religion is all about. And we need to be reminded it's about our relationship 
with God. And that's where Jesus began to shed new light in the world. Jesus focused on the great moral obligations of life, such as love for God and justice among people. Actually, friends, that may be one of the more difficult lessons for us to learn because it leaves us humbled because we know so many times we don't measure, I, you know, I don't measure up to those standards always, and you, neither do you. I don't know if you've heard of a man named Tony Campolo. He is a, he's a modern-day preacher and teacher. You may have seen him on TV. You may have read some of his books. Anyway, he tells the story about how he was teaching a sociology class, and the class had reviewed a variety of topics, everything from alcoholism to child abuse. And one day, in order to get the class discussion going, he asked the students what some of the greatest world relig religious leaders might have said about the topic of prostitution. He asked what Buddha or what Mohammed might have said about the topic. He asked about the Mosaic Law, and the discussion got intense and lively. And then he asked what Jesus would have said to a prostitute. And there was a Jewish student in the class, and he immediately raised his hand. He said, Jesus never met a prostitute. Well, Donna Campola pulled out his Bible and said, oh yeah, yeah, let me show you right here in the Bible. The young man interrupted him. He said, no sir, you didn't, you didn't hear me. I said, Jesus never met a prostitute. And once again, Campolo protested. He pulled out his Bible. He started leafing through, the, leafing through the pages, searching for that passage where Jesus forgave the fallen woman, you know. And then he turned to the passage where he gave the woman at the well a change for spiritual renewal. And once again, the student spoke out. And this time, there was a little touch of anger in his raised voice. He said, you're not listening to me, sir. You're not listening to what I'm saying. I'm not saying, I, I am saying that Jesus never met a prostitute. He said, do you think that when he looked at Mary Magdalene, she was a prostitute? Do you think he saw whores when he looked at women like her? Doctor, listen to me. Jesus never saw a prostitute. And Tony Campolo fell silent. The teacher was being corrected by a Jewish student who understood Christ's message more than the seasoned Christian. My family, I'm telling you that story because to be a follower of Jesus Christ means that we have to learn to see people as Christ sees them. Are you hearing me? When the church is really the body of Christ, its members accept things that the world cannot accept. I mean, the prostitute becomes a sister. The convicted criminal becomes a brother. The outsider becomes an insider. Friends, our Lord and our Master Jesus Christ has shown us that way and demonstrated it in many powerful ways in the Scriptures. But the work that He demonstrated then was not finished. We are supposed to keep that going. We are each called to continue that work. And to that end, friends, it isn't enough for me or you or any of us to simply denounce injustice. We've got to work to eliminate it. It's not enough just to condemn poverty and need, but we've got to learn how to create a society where poverty and hunger no longer even exist. Whoa, we've got a lot of work to do. It's not enough to lament racism that continues to be rampant in our culture. We must become change agents by starting here in our community, by partnering with our sisters and brothers at St. John AME Church over here, for, for example. So that that cancer that's upon our, our community can be eradicated in all of its subtle forms. And it's not enough, I'll just say it, it's not enough as a denomination 
to say that we have open hearts, open minds, and open doors. When in reality, our doors in many places are only open to a select few. And it's not enough to wish for peace. We've got to work for peace by becoming peacemakers. And my family, all of this, all of that, begins right here at this table. This table is not mine. And this table is not yours. But this table belongs to Jesus Christ. And he welcomes all to come home and have a place at the table. Let's pray to God. Loving God, we thank you that you call all of us home. We sit in our pews, in our seats, and we think about how sad it is that that person next to us is so bad. When the truth is, Lord, we're all not what you want us to be. And we're going to pray that in a minute. So I guess, Lord, what I'm saying is thank you that you recognize all of us for who we are. We're all strugglers in this pilgrimage, this journey of faith. But we should all be very grateful today for your unconditional love. So thank you for allowing this place to be open for us, to gather around your table and to receive this holy, holy meal. Thank you, Lord, for Christ and for the tremendous price he paid to make it available for us. And we give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, as we respond to the word today, I want to invite you to stand. And let's turn in our hymnal to page 7, where it says response to the word. And let's join together for this Apostles' Creed. Let's stand. Let's affirm our faith together. Will you join me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. standing as we join together for our confession and pardon is found on page 8 of your hymnal and while you're searching for that let me offer this invitation Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another therefore let's join together as we confess our sin before God and one another let's pray Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. 
and we have not loved our neighbors, and we've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you and you and you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Turn to your neighbors and offer a sign of peace and reconciliation. You may be seated. Friends, our ushers are preparing to come forward as we continue our response to the word. So let's prepare ourselves to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Loving God, we thank you that this table up here is your table because sometimes we make our tables awfully small. Sometimes we have people we don't want to invite. Sometimes there are people that we forget to invite, but we know that you invite all. So as we celebrate communion today, God, help us realize that you are with us and you call us to give of our time, talents, gifts, service, and witness. In Jesus' name.
Responses for the Great Thanksgiving are found on page uh, 17 of your hymnal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image, and you breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He, fed the, he healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and ate with <laughs> sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus he prom uh, ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. It's through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. you friends that our faith teaches us that all are welcome to this table and so if you're a guest with us please join us here come as you can if you're not able to make your way here we will come to you uh, we'll ask our choir to come first but the invitation is simple follow uh, the invitation is simple come and the ushers will give you direction choir
powerful and mighty God, we thank you that through your Son, Jesus, you have given us this gift and this promise of life eternal. May your blessing be upon us now as we prepare to go. May this bread and cup nourish our bodies and our souls and have, help us have the endurance the wisdom and understanding we need to do your will. In the name of the living Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We invite you to stand for our closing hymn, number 664, sent forth by God's blessing. Let's sing. God, may your blessing and the peace that passes all understanding be upon us all. And we give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. And take a moment to greet one another before you go.